Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Valsa Williams and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Union cabinet approves amendments to the national policy on biofuels 2018 intended to allow more feedstock for production of biofuels and advance ethanol blending target of 20% by 1st April next year. President Ramnath Kovin says there is immense scope for cooperation between India and Jamaica in various sectors including business, railways, agriculture, hospitality and tourism. Center announces formation of Cotton Council of India under chairmanship of Suresh Bhai Kotak. Ensuring online safety, trust and accountability are important objectives of the government, says Minister of State for Electronics and Information Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Indian Navy successfully undertakes maiden firing of first indigenously developed naval anti-ship missile from Sea King 42B helicopter at Integrated Test Range, Valesar. Supreme Court orders release of Ferrari Valen, convict in Rajiv Gandhi assassination case invoking powers under Article 142 of the Constitution. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur to inaugurate India Pavilion at Khan Film Festival today says India's red carpet lineup will capture for the first time diversity of countries' cinematic excellence. Sweden and Finland to jointly submit their applications to join NATO, U.S. President Joe Biden to host Finnish President and Swedish Prime Minister for talks on their NATO membership. In Assam, rescue and relief operations intensified in flood-hit areas. International Museum Day is being observed today to raise awareness among people about museums. Three Indian pugilists ensure medals for the country as they enter semi-finals of Women's World Boxing Championships in Istanbul and in IPL cricket Kolkata Knight Riders to take on Lucknow Super Giants in Navi Mumbai this evening The Union Cabinet has approved the amendments to the National Policy on Biofuels 2018 The amendments are intended to allow more feedstocks for production of biofuels advance the ethanol blending target of 20% blending of ethanol in petrol and promote the production of biofuels in the country. Besides, the amendments are also to add new members to the National Biofuel Coordination Committee, NBCC, and grant permission for export of biofuels in specific cases. The amendments have been brought in view of advancements in the field of biofuels, various decisions taken in the NBCC meetings to increase biofuel production, recommendation of the Standing Committee and the decision to advance to introduce ethanol blended petrol with up to 20% ethanol throughout the country from the 1st of April next year. The amendments will pave the way for Make in India Drive, thereby leading to reduction in import of petroleum products by generation of more and more biofuels. Since many more feedstocks are being allowed for production of biofuels, this will promote the Atmanirbhar Bharat and give an impetus to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of India becoming energy independent by 2047. President Ramnath Kovind addressed the joint sitting of both houses of the Jamaican Parliament. He was accorded a ceremonial welcome by Senate President Thomas Tavares Vinson and Speaker of the House Marisa Dalrymple last night. Delivering a welcome address, Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness said, the help provided by India has deepened the relation of the two nations. President Kovind appreciated the role being played by the Indian diaspora in Jamaica. The Indian diaspora is a living bridge between our two countries. It is a matter of pride for us that members of the Indian diaspora are recognized at the highest level for their contribution to Jamaica. We are very proud of the achievements of the Indian community in Jamaica. Some of you have risen to the highest government offices in Jamaica. I have been informed that many of you have been conferred with distinctions and honored by the government here. 
The president appraised the parliament of the technological developments where India is taking the lead. He said India shares America's Vision 2030 goals of empowering its people and ensuring a secure, cohesive and just society while becoming a prosperous and sustainable economy. He said there is immense scope for cooperation and mutual learning between the two nations including business, railways, agriculture, hospitality and tourism. Union government has announced the formation of the Cotton Council of India under the chairmanship of renowned veteran cotton man Suresh Bhai Kotak. It will have representation from textiles, agriculture, commerce and finance ministries along with Cotton Corporation of India and Cotton Research Institute. The first meeting of the proposed council has been scheduled on the 28th of this month. The council will discuss, deliberate and prepare a robust action plan for bringing out a tangible improvement in this field. The announcement came yesterday during a meeting with stakeholders from the Cotton Valley chain held under the chairmanship of Union Textiles Minister Piyush Goel. In this meeting, a cross-section of views and suggestions were deliberated for softening cotton and yarn prices on urgent basis to address unprecedented price rise witnessed in the current season. It was pointed out that cotton productivity is the biggest challenge in the country, resulting in less cotton production despite the largest area under cotton cultivation. The Union government has taken several initiatives to create an atmosphere of safety and trust and address the issues of cyber security online. Minister of State for Electronics and Information Rajiv Chandrasekhar said this while releasing a frequently asked questions document on cyber security directions in New Delhi. He said over 809 crore rupees have been spent from 2019 to 2020 to address cyber security challenges. Mr. Chandrasekhar said further 515 crore rupees have been allocated for 2022-23 to address infrastructure awareness, tools and cyber swachata kendras. The minister said ensuring online safety, trust and accountability are important objectives of the government. Minister of State for Chemicals and Fertilizers Bhagwant Khuba today said the government has created the Center of Excellence in academic institutions across the country to boost research and innovation process. Inaugurating the Industry Connect with Center of Excellence Conclave in New Delhi, Mr. Kuba appreciated the efforts carried out by Centers of Excellence in developing the indigenous technology to fulfill the mission of Atmanirbhar Bharat. He requested the scientists to carry out research with a vision to develop sustainable and alternative solutions to complex industrial problems. The Indian Navy today successfully undertook maiden firing of the first indigenously developed naval anti-ship missile from Sea King 42B helicopter at Integrated Test Range Baleswar. The missile followed the desired sea skimming trajectory and reached the designated target with high degree of accuracy validating the control, guidance and mission algorithms. In a tweet, the Indian Navy said, this firing is a significant step towards achieving self-reliance in niche missile technology and reaffirms the Indian Navy's commitment to indigenization. The Naval Anti-Ship Missile has been developed in association with Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. The missile employed many new technologies including an indigenously developed launcher for the helicopter. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh has congratulated DRDO, Indian Navy and associated teams for the maiden developmental flight test. He said India attained a high level of capability in the indigenous design and development of missile systems. Minister of State for Health Dr. Bharti Pawar today launched National Emergency Life Support NELS courses for doctors, nurses and paramedics in New Delhi. Apart from the training modules, the program also includes developing training infrastructure in all states and union territories to implement the NELS course. It will also cre- create a cadre of trainers to train doctors, nurses and paramedics working in emergency departments of the hospitals and ambulance services. She said realizing the policy of Make in India and Atmanirbhar Bharat, the NLS provides standardized curriculum which is based on Indian context, context and developed in India. The Supreme Court today ordered release of Perari Valan, convict in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case, invoke, invoking powers under Article 142 of the Constitution. The court was of the view that the inordinate delay in deciding Perari Valan's early release plea by the governor under Article 161 warranted his release. 
a bench comprising Justices L. Nageshwara Rao and B. R. Gawai, observed that the Tamil Nadu State Cabinet took their decision to grant remission to Pirari Valan on relevant considerations. The bench reckoned that the state government is well within its authority to aid and advise the governor in pardon or remission pleas pertaining to cases of murder. Pirari Valan has served over 30 years in prison. He approached the court aggrieved by the delay in his release despite recommendation given by the Tamil Nadu government in 2018 to remit his sentence. Pirari Valan was arrested in 1991 at the age of 19. He was accused of purchasing the battery that was used to trigger the belt bomb used to kill former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi and 43 others. In 1999, he was sentenced to death for his role in the case. In 2014, his death sentence was commuted to life imprisonment. In March this year, the SC had granted him bail. India has set a target of doubling its air passenger traffic in the next two to three years by catering to at least 200 million passengers. To achieve this target, the government has planned to construct 200 airports, water drones and heliports across the country in the upcoming four years. In an exclusive interview with AI News, Union Minister for Civil Aviation, Jyoti Raditya Sindhya said, the government is focusing on developing infrastructure and increasing the fleet size by putting in place a suitable ecosystem for civil aviation. He said 67 new airports, water drones and heliports have been built in the last eight years as compared to only 74 airports that were built in the 70 years before that. We were at 144 million discrete travelers, 14.4 crore discrete travelers in 1920 before the pandemic hit us. This year we closed at close to roughly about 100 million discrete travelers. I see that going up to 200 million discrete travelers or 20 crore passengers by the year 2025, 26 or so. So I see us doubling in the next two or three years. Speaking about India's indigenous navigation system, Gagan, the minister observed that increased air connectivity creates congestion, which results in tremendous amount of air traffic. This in turn puts pressure on air navigation system and air traffic management system. He said these two systems are critical in ensuring the safety of aircraft and the Gagan navigation system will help these systems to ensure smooth navigation of aircrafts. He said safety parameters need to be put in place before the rollout of the system on an incremental basis. When you start increasing connectivity, there is a certain amount of congestion that takes place. That congestion results in tremendous amount of traffic in mainly the metro areas and the unserved airports as well, which puts in pressure on the air navigation systems known as ANS and the air traffic management systems, which are known as ATM. The ANS and ATM are critical in ensuring the safety factor of aircraft flying. And therefore, computerized satellite system, which is Gagan or which is known as WAS internationally, uh, becomes a complement to the ATC, to the ANS, to the ATM systems to be able to navigate aircraft. It's a new technology which, without human interference, you will have safe piloting and guiding of aircraft down to landing. The minister appreciated the innovative capabilities of India's scientists and engineers for developing the Gagan navigation system. Recently, Indigo became the first airline in the country to land aircraft using the indigenous navigation system, Gagan. In Gujarat, at least nine workers lost their lives when a wall of a salt factory collapsed at Halwad in Morbi district today. According to sources, about 30 workers were believed to be crushed under the debris when the wall collapsed. Dead bodies of 10 workers have been exhumed so far. The incident took place when a wall collapsed at a factory called Sagar Salt at Halwad GIDC. Relief operations were launched and the injured shifted to the nearby hospital. Further details are awaited. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio, a reminder of the headlines before we move on. Union Cabinet approves amendments to the National Policy on Biofuels 2018, intended to allow more feedstocks for production of biofuels and advance the ethanol blending target of 20% by the 1st of April next year. President Ramnath Kovan says there is immense scope for cooperation between India and Jamaica in various sectors including business, railways, agriculture, hospitality and tourism. Centre announces formation of Cotton Council of India under chairmanship of Suresh Bhai Kotak. Ensuring online safety, trust and accountability are important objectives of the government, 
says Minister of State for Electronics and Information, Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Indian Navy successfully undertakes made-in firing of the first indigenously developed naval anti-ship missile from Sea King 42B helicopter at Integrated Test Range, Baleswar. Supreme Court orders release of Perari Valan convict in Rajiv Gandhi assassination case involving, invoking powers under Article 142 of the Constitution. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur to inaugurate India Pavilion at Cannes Film Festival today says India's red carpet lineup will capture for the first time diversity of the country's cinematic excellence. Sweden and Finland to jointly submit the applications to join NATO. U.S. President Joe Biden to host Finnish President and Swedish Prime Minister for talks on the NATO membership. In Assam, rescue and relief operations intensified in flood-hit areas. International Museum Day has been observed today to raise awareness among people about the museums. Three Indian pugilists ensure medals from the country as they enter semi-finals of the Women's World Boxing Championships in Istanbul and in IPL cricket, Kolkata Knight Riders to take on Lucknow Super Giants in Navi Mumbai this evening. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. Competition ke agar aap kar rahe tayari, to unke liye all in the radio par hum nai hai abhyas. Ek aisa karakram jis mein aap puchhenge sawal WhatsApp number 92890 nine four zero double four Email karenge abhyas.airnews at gmail.com par. Aur humare vishishagye denge iska jawab. Is bar ka vishay hai anthropology aur sawal bhejne ke antim tarik hai 18 mail. Aapka abhyas. हमारा प्रयास वेलकम बैक टू द मिड डे न्यूज इंफॉर्मेशन एंड ब्रॉडकास्टिंग मिनिस्टर अनुराग ठाकुर विल इनॉग्रेट द इंडिया पवेलियन एट द कान फिल्म फेस्टिवल इन फ्रांस टुडे ही सेड द पवेलियन विल फोकस ऑन पोजीशनिंग इंडिया एज द कंटेंट हब ऑफ द वर्ल्ड in a newspaper article, the minister wrote that India's presence at Khan this year holds significance in many ways. Mr. Thakur said it will be for the first time that India's red carpet lineup captures the diversity of the country's cinematic excellence. He said the celebration of India at Khan and the recognition of its cinematic excellence the world over is set to manifest the country into the content hub of the world. Mr. Thakur reached Khan yesterday and took a tour of the India Pavilion at the Khan Film Festival on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. In today's episode, we remember patriot poet Mukund Das, who died on the 18th of May 1934. Through his writings, Das contributed to the spread of the Swadeshi movement in rural Bengal. Mukund Das was born on the 22nd of February 1878 in Munshi Ganj district, now in Bangladesh. When he was seven, the family migrated to Borishal where they settled permanently. Das grew up listening to Vaishnav bhajans from his father and began to compose and sing songs on his own. He was initiated into the nationalist movement by Bengali educationist and patriot Ashwini Kumar Datta. In 1900, Das took initiation in Vaishnavism from the monk Rasanand Thakur. In 1905, Ashwini Kumar Datta gave an inspiring speech at the Borishal Town Hall against the proposed partition of Bengal. Datta wished that messages from the leaders could be carried to the villagers through dramas and plays. Mukund Das was deeply moved by Ashwini Kumar Datta's speech. 
he resolved to fulfill the wish of the great patriot. Within three months, he composed his masterpiece, Matri Puja. The primary theme of his drama was patriotism and freedom movement. <laughs> Das raised a Swadeshi theater group to stage plays across the villages of Bengal. In 1906, Mukunda Das staged his plays at different places of Borishal and then traveled to Noakhali and Tripura. <laughs> Matri Puja successfully ran for two years and roused the patriotic feelings of the masses of Bengal. The play was further popularized by the press. Bande Mataram, Yugantar, Sandhya, Nobhashakti, Prabhasi and Modern Review played a part in popularizing the drama. The government of newly formed Eastern Bengal and Assam clamped down heavily on the play, citing incitement to violence. In 1908, he was stopped by the police when he tried to stage the play in Bagarhat. Mukundadas was arrested and imprisoned for three years on charges of sedition. <laughs> Mukundadas joined the non cooperation movement. When the movement was called off, Mukundadas settled with his group in Kolkata. Matripuja was banned by the government and he began to compose social plays in order to avoid being banned. In 1932, the government banned all his plays. After the ban, Das was restricted to singing only. He, along with his group, performed only musical shows. His last on the 18th of May 1934. The immense collection of his writings continue to inspire Indians through decades. We salute the great nationalist. I am so happy. We also remember Mata Hormin Khan who participated in the First War of Indian Independence in 1857. He was caught by company troops in the course of their attacks. He was sentenced to transportation for life with labor in iron in 1857 and sent from Bombay to the Andaman Islands in April 1858. He was caught by the British at the time of his escape from their detention and hanged on the 18th of May 1858. We salute the great son of the soil. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. International Museum Day is being observed today. The day is celebrated on May the 18th every year to raise awareness among people about museums. Museums are an important means of cultural exchange and the development of mutual understanding, cooperation and peace among people. We have a report. Every year all the museums across the globe are invited to participate in International Museum Day to promote the role of museums. International Museum Day is a significant for creating awareness about the role of museums in the development of the society on an international level. Museums play an important part in the development of society. They enlighten us about the numerous unknowns and take us to places we have never been before. Each year there is a specific theme for International Museum Day. This year's theme for International Museum Day is the power of museums. Museums have the power to transform the world around us. As incomparable place of discovery, they teach us about our past and open our minds to new ideas. Two essential steps in building a better future. International Museum Day was first held in 1977. Since then, it has gained increasing attention. With Virendra Singh's report, Manal Said, AIR News. Sweden and Finland will jointly submit the applications to join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO today. During a joint press conference, Swedish Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson and Finnish President Sauli Ninesto announced their decision to submit the NATO bids together. 
White House Press Secretary Karine Jean Pierre said US President Joe Biden will host his Finnish counterpart and the Swedish Prime Minister for talks on the two nations' NATO applications. Russian President Vladimir Putin, however, has warned that NATO's expansion may trigger a response from Moscow. In Uttarakhand, more than 5,72,000 pilgrims have visited Chardham Yatra since the start this year. Keeping in view the convenience of the passengers, registration has been made mandatory. If there is no registration, the devotees have been returned from Rishikesh. The state government and police are doing everything possible to help the devotees. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami has appealed to the devotees to travel only after consulting a doctor. In Assam, rescue and relief operations have been intensified by the Army, National Disaster Response Force, State Disaster Response Force and local administrations in flood-hit areas. Over 4 lakh people have been affected due to floods and landslides in 26 districts. Eight persons lost their lives. About 40,000 people have been shifted to relief camps. The Mahasau, Hujai and Borak Valley are the worst affected areas. District administrations are distributing food items in affected areas. Meanwhile, Northeast Frontier Railway is working on a war footing to restore rail connectivity in South Assam. Talking to AIR News, Chief Public Relations Officer of the Northeast Frontier Railway, Sabisachi Day, said that damage occurred at 50 to 60 locations in the Mahasau district. The Indian Meteorological Department has issued a red alert in Kori Kod, Vayanad, Karnod and Kasargod districts in North Kerala, indicating the possibility of extremely heavy rainfall. An orange alert is in place in Trishur, Palakkad and Malapuram districts, where heavy to very heavy rainfall is expected. A yellow alert has also been issued in seven other districts of Kerala, including the state capital, Tiruvananthapuram. The National Human Rights Commission has issued an advisory to the Centre of the State Governments to prevent, minimise and mitigate impacts of environmental pollution and degradation on human rights. The Commission has finalised advisory and consultation with domain experts by examining the effects of air and water pollution and ecological degradation and enjoyment of basic human rights. Issuing the advisory, the NHRC has observed that in spite of having one of the world's best statutory and policy frameworks for environment protection, India is experiencing a serious problem of air and water pollution and ecological degradation causing impediments in the enjoyment of basic human rights. The Sensex and the Nifty today witnessed modest gains in the afternoon trade. Both indices rose amid positive cues from the Asian market. The Sensex was trading above 54,400 points, while the Nifty was trading above 16,300 level. The Sensex climbed 119 points or 0.22% to trade at 54,437, while the Nifty surged 44 points or 0.27% to trade at 16,303 points. In IBA Women's World Boxing Championships, Indian boxers Nikhat Zareen, Manisha and Parveen continued their brilliant run to confirm three medals for the country by entering the semi-finals in Istanbul. Nikhat Zareen beat England's Charlie Davidson 5-0 in the quarterfinals. She will now take on Caroline D. Almeida of Brazil in the semi-finals. Manisha defeated Moncor of Mongolia 4-1. She will take on Italy's Irma Testa, who defeated Uzbekistan's Sitora Turdivekova in another quarter-final. In IPL cricket, Kolkata Knight Riders will take on Lucknow Super Giants at the G.Y. Patel Stadium, Navi Mumbai at 7.30pm this evening. Last night, Sunrisers had to part defeated Mumbai Indians by three runs at the 1K Day Stadium, Mumbai. A quick look at the weather update for the day. National Capital Delhi is having generally cloudy sky with possibility of light rain or drizzle. Mumbai expected to have mainly clear sky. Chennai likely to have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Kolkata likely to have partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. Now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Union Cabinet approves amendments to the National Policy on Biofuels 2018 intended to allow more feedstocks for production of biofuels and advance the ethanol blending target of 20% by 1st April next year. President Ramnath Kovin says there is immense scope for cooperation between India and Jamaica in various sectors including business, railways, agriculture, hospitality and tourism. Centre announces formation of Cotton Council of India under chairmanship of Suresh Bhai Kotak. Ensuring online safety, trust and accountability are important objectives of the government, says Minister of State for Electronics and Information, Rajiv Chandrasekhar. 
Inter Navy successfully undertakes maiden firing of first indigenously developed naval anti ship missile from Sea King 42B helicopter at integrated test range Valesar. Supreme Court orders release of Ferrari Valen convict in Rajiv Gandhi assassination case invoking powers under Article 142 of the Constitution. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur to inaugurate India Pavilion at Khan Film Festival today. And with that, we end the midday.